Irene Mia, the World Economic Forum is launching today the Global Information Technology Report. What are its main findings? Well, Nordic countries features again uh, very well in the, in the top 10. We have uh, Denmark and Sweden, number one and number two, respectively, for the second year in a row. Also, the other Nordic countries features in the top 10. So, again, it's really a confirmation of the, of the successful uh, strategy followed by all these countries, Denmark in particular. Um, putting really ICT in the in the center of their competitiveness agendas, these countries have uh, uh, invested very much in uh, in uh, in uh, you know making ICT infrastructure uh, uh, easy to access and also cheap to access, which has resulted in extremely high penetration rates, especially in uh, in the case of uh, of Denmark. Apart from that, this country could really count on a top-notch education system and on a, on a large pool of uh, qualified uh, uh, you know, technical uh, labor force. This resulted in an extremely high level of innovation, uh, not only company-wise, but also in terms of, uh, of uh, people. It's, uh, we all know that Danish people are quite uh, uh, happy to uh, you know, in, uh, adopt technology and also pioneer new applications. So it's a very fertile ground for innovation in, uh, in these countries. The other technological powerhouse, the U.S., is also moving up this year. Yeah, the U.S. is moving to, number, to position number four. Last year it was position number number seven, if you remember, so it's three position improvement. I wouldn't say it's a, it's a dramatic move. I wouldn't say it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very important improvement. First of all, uh, also, first of all, the U.S. didn't really improve significantly in terms of score, so in terms of its own performance, it's just another country kind of... Uh, uh, dropped in the ranking. At the same time, I would say that once the country is in the top 10, you know, the fact that it's number three or number seven doesn't really change. It means that really it's, a, it's one of the most networked economies in the world. The US, it's, uh, it's an extremely successful country. We all know it's probably the, the biggest, it's still the biggest uh, high tech powerhouse in the world, the most innovative country if we measure by the number of, uh, of uh, utility patents per capita. Is a country which really can count on an extremely uh, high level uh, uh, education system, especially higher education, together with uh, research institution. The quality of research institution in the US is exceptional. exceptional. At the same time, the US can count on quite uh, um, efficient markets, probably on the best uh, business environment for doing business in general, but also for ICT business, also in terms of venture capital, for instance, which is something very important for you know, startups in the, in the, in the high-tech sector. Uh, this is not to say that there aren't uh, some um, minor weaknesses to be addressed for the US to continue to be as competitive as it is, especially, I would say, in the regulatory environment for doing business. Um, there are, for some variable, like for instance, uh, intellectual property protection, the US is ranked number 30, which is good, granted it's good, but it's not at the level of the Nordic countries, for instance. So I would say this kind of uh, weaknesses needs to be addressed for the, for the US to continue to be the most innovative country in, uh, in the world. South Korea is for the first time in the top 10. Why is that? Yes, Korea is actually the biggest uh, improvement in the top 10. It's actually up 10 positions from position 19 last year to position number, number 9 this year. So it's a big improvement. And it's also a big improvement in terms of score. So um, the, the Korea is it's another inspiring success story. It's another textbook example on how to turn from a resource-poor resource economy into a, a, a you know, high-tech powerhouse and how to really insert itself successfully in the, in the, in the world economy. Korea is a country which 30 years ago had more or less the same GDP per capita of Mexico, and now it's you know one of the most competitive economy in uh, in the world. Uh, I would say that the government again here again had a, had a big role really in uh, in uh, inserting ICT promotion and penetration as a cornerstone of the development strategy 30 years ago. So massive investment in, uh, in, uh, in the ICT infrastructure, but also in the soft infrastructure, so in education. The capacity to involve the private sector in, uh, in the same vision for ICT penetration. All this resulted in uh, extremely high level of innovation. Korea is actually among the top 10 in terms of number of uh, patent per capita as well as uh, uh, extremely successful uh, uh, multinational in, uh, in the high tech sector, but also in other sectors. So again, really I would say that Korea is a, a very inspiring story for countries which are now looking at how to leapfrog to higher stages of, uh, of development. Talking about Latin America, Argentina has dropped significantly. Uh, tell us about it. 
Unfortunately, yes. The picture for Latin America this year is not as positive as last year in general. Uh, again, I think we should introduce a note of caution here uh, in these drops. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, in the case of Argentina, it's really a drop of rank. It's not a drop in the score. In the, when I say the score, it's really the performance of the country. If you look at the score of Argentina for this year and last year, it's exactly the same. So it's basically not the fact that the country is kind of worsening its performance, it's more than there are more countries doing better than Argentina, which again, it's something that you know, should worry the, the, the country. Uh, I would say that in the case of Argentina, there are some rigidities which need to be addressed for the country to become more competitive, competitive and also more network uh, ready in a way. This, this um, general rigidities have to do a lot with the, with the markets, the way in which the markets really work, the labor market, uh, um, goods market are extremely over-regulated in Argentina. In terms of network readiness specifically, I would say that uh, the, the, the main limitation to, Argentina, to Argentinian uh, performance is the fact that uh, there, do, there doesn't seem to be a lot of prioritization of ICT penetration in the national agenda. So really I would say that uh, this is a call for the government to really uh, put ICT penetration and access uh, more in the center of the, of the national agenda. This is the seventh year the World Economic Forum is analyzing the IT sector. What have we learned? Well, we have learned that we have, uh, we have had the confirmation of the importance of ICT, how ICT can really uh, revolutionize not only uh, the economic performance of a country, but really the way in which uh, people live in a country. We have seen the power of ICT in uh, reducing poverty, for instance, in, uh, in providing access to, to education to poor kids access to information and markets to rural communities. So it's really, uh, again, a confirmation of the important role of ICT as an enabler of competitiveness and better uh, condition of uh, living. So that was the idea with, with which, in, uh, seven years ago, in 2001, we started this project. And we are uh, happy to have started it because we have seen that ICT is really something which needs to be explored and uh, looked into carefully when we look at competitiveness in general.